they said we were just workers. <laughs> I pity them. Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Workers Only Challenge. By far one of the most requested videos for me to create was Workers Only for the Extra Levels. Seeing as we won't be getting any more until the full release of the game, I figured now is the perfect time to start. First however, we need to clarify some rules. 1. Only workers may deal damage. 2. I am not responsible for the actions of my allies. 3. Royal Guard are allowed for several reasons. I can't control them, they have the same appearance as a worker, and they really aren't that great anyways. Four, the run will be completed on varying difficulties between levels. Five, some levels aren't traditional and will be skipped, such as Tug of War or Enemy of My Enemy, and Beatles Rise Up due to the inability to use workers. Lastly, please like and subscribe. These videos take dozens of hours to record, voice over, and edit. Your support means the world to me. With that out of the way, enjoy the video. Starting off with a bang, literally, we are on the Lunar New Year's level, on the impossible difficulty. Our objective is to gather a variety of spices before the new year for the Queen's Hot Pot. I start the level off placing some workers and tunneling to the surface, where I collect some food. Shortly thereafter, we're introduced to a brand new game mechanic, Firecrackers. Firecrackers are insanely powerful. They can bust through impenetrable walls as well as explode on command, dealing 200 damage to nearby enemies. Unfortunately, this checkered beetle almost kills me due to my carelessness. Whoops. After barely surviving, I clear some whip spiders and use the firecrackers down south to punch through the walls that would otherwise be a severe headache to get around. Also, I'd like to take a moment to express how much I love this level. Look at how these velvet worms fly like confetti after the firecracker. It's super cool. With the food gathered, I collect the chili flakes and the Szechuan peppercorns. Ugh. With these spices, my ants go from mere workers to giga chad warriors in mere seconds. One taste of the queen's hot pot makes them completely invincible to attacks and deal insane damage. With this great increase in strength, I send two groups of workers to grab the heart to obtain spice locations. Up in the northwest is a group of four walls that must be destroyed. Upon attacking these walls, the nearby tree frogs come to intercept. I can't really kill these tree frogs, so the invincibility and damage is perfect to clear the paths. The southeastern mountain is guarded by a massive horde of green road beetles. Green road beetles are insanely powerful against workers due to their two armor. With the invincibility, we can slip past the road beetles and bring the spices home. But hey, wait, what's going on over here? Oh. One simple oversight made the situation look dire already. The tree frogs don't attack the invincible workers, but rather swallow them whole. This proved to be a real problem, as I didn't have a backup plan for the wooden barriers. I figured I'd come back to that later and finish gathering the cinnamon stick on the mountain instead. The cinnamon stick provides double food, so I cl quickly collected all the food I'm going to need. There's also this huge labyrinth, which right at the end has more spices I need. I go ahead and send some workers in there now to get it going, but now I must clear the barriers up north again. So I bring in the demolition crew. This actually worked really well and cleared all but one of the barriers. I came back a second time and finally cracked the barriers all the way. Around this time, the surface creatures were getting a little insane. However, I fought my way to the star anises and brought them back to the hot pot. Perfectly timed as well, the last spices from the labyrinth were just arriving. And with that, we completed Lunar New Year on Insane. This is what the is. Until the Nyan Beast. This intimidating amphibian is a newt on steroids with hundreds of thousands of HP. Luckily, firecrackers do vastly increased damage to it. With these supercrackers, I fire them off and take care of the Nyan Beast right in time for the new year. Next we have Aggrandize, the first official extra level. Our objective is to eliminate the huge whip spider through carefully clearing threats on the map. 
We will be playing on the medium difficulty. First, I spent a suspiciously long time clearing the freedom given at the start, before making my workers. I first challenged the spiderlings to the west and took the crab bits they were guarding. I then go to the crab, but rather than fighting it, I ignore it and take the food it's guarding. I clear various other things like beetle larvae, jumping spiders, and tiger beetles. While clearing the young tiger beetles, their elder decided I was having too much fun and pulverized me instantly. I kept eyeing this mantis to the east and eventually decided I wanted to challenge it. I was making progress but barely lost enough momentum that the fight was lost, unfortunately. More beetle and spider clearing later and I decided to finally challenge the witch spider. And after a long fight, I lost. So, I try again, but this time did everything better. From my clear path to kiting enemies out one at a time, I clear with much improved efficiency. The only thing of note is this damn mole cricket chamber. It is so hard to lure out mole crickets. I was having a really hard time. After a grueling 30 straight minutes of dealing with the mole crickets, I eventually make it to the whip spider with a much improved situation. More workers and more food stored. After a long fight, I came out victorious this time. Titan climbing was a huge help. Now we have babysitting, one of the many extra levels that I've never actually completed before, workers only or not. Our objective is to clear all creatures on the surface and keep our sister colony alive. This was first attempted on medium difficulty. The sister colony is, well, very stupid to be blunt. They will often build too many food stores, sit idle with workers when there are jobs that need to be done, and they will anger surface creatures when we aren't prepared. I see a lot of free food to the west, so I go there first, only to discover a crab right under the log. Nope. Instead, I go to help my sister colony being bullied by a spider. After freeing them from the measly threat of the trio of tiger beetles invade my nest. Miraculously, the sister colony is very helpful in defending these. I'm then stuck in a game of whack-a-mole while my sister colony constantly gets into trouble. Crabs here, beetles there, but the rapid fire support is invaluable and I appreciate it. Then my sister goes and plays literal whack-a-mole with the tiger beetle larvae. After they waste tons of time, disaster strikes when these two mother wolf spiders invade the sister colony. We barely lack the damage to kill them, and before long, the large group of tiger beetle from the north are angered and quickly end my run. So, what's the first thing you do when losing a level? Increase the difficulty to hard and restart. So, that's exactly what I did. Why? I have no idea, but now we're on hard difficulty. Things go mostly fine, except that a larger and stronger colony by this point. This didn't come without cost, however. My sister colony was very lacking in food, and they couldn't hold their own before dying to a single tiger beetle. So I restart on hard difficulty one more time, being careful to leave a ton of food for my sister colony, and... It worked! The sister colony ended up becoming super powerful due to the amount of food I left for them. Their mass amount of rapid fire provided invaluable DPS for my wall of workers. With this power, we clear the map in no time, ending out the level, wasting time in the exact same game of whack-a-mole that my sister was earlier. Next, the other foots, a creative level where we take control of the counterpart colony we faced off in tier 3. I choose the whopping extreme difficulty, despite what I've heard about its incredible challenge. Thankfully, we are given access to the aggressive brood, defensive, royal guard, and second wind upgrades. These are by far some of the most powerful abilities in the game, tripling the damage on our workers and giving them a max damage taken of 45, and then a flat 20% physical damage reduction. I'm also given infinite time in the beginning to build a nest, so I do just that. Once I tunnel to the surface, I'm given even more food and an objective to bring workers to a tube, with some enemies on the way. Due to my incredible upgrades and large amount of food I'm given, this is a breeze, along with everything else that shows up for a long time. Especially with these wolf spiders. With the titan climbing and the fact that workers can only take a maximum of damage of 20, these are a complete joke. Nothing can beat a horde of workers, something these whip spiders did not seem to understand. So far this level's been really easy, even on extreme difficulty. I really don't see how- WHOA! That's a lot of insanely tanky beetles. But they also died. HA! That wasn't so bad. Oh lord. This could be the end. The large whip spiders are shielding the tightly clumped smaller ones, while zoning my ants from a distance. The smaller whip spiders are shredding my ants like there's no tomorrow. They push towards my queen and the crickets invade as well. I'm forced to use my queen ability. But it's not even enough. Even with an unlimited army and royal guard, I was taken out. Wow, that was a super quick turn of events. So I try again, and be sure to begin the fight against the whip spiders outside the nest this time. This allows me to space out the clumped up whip spiders and kill many of the high DPS spiderlings before they clump too tightly. They still do push to my queen, but due to the preparations of opening up my nest a ton more, the royal guard and second wind are more than enough to take care of the invaders. From here, only the enemy colony stands in my way.
At first, I was having a really easy time. Although they are powerful, they have mortar instead of rapid fire, which is by far the inferior choice. To top it off, the scientists smites their whole army when they fight on my side. I quickly drain their food and enter their nest. Anticipating Royal Guard, I don't charge their queen and instead camp off to the side. Once my workers attack their queen, the Royal Guard tri triggers. Except it doesn't. They only have Royal Decree. This really stinks because I could have simply camped on their queen and taken the win right there, but no matter. I'll regroup and kill their majors. Unfortunately, they had way too many mages for me to really fight, so I have to pull back again. Double, unfortunately, the food drops scale over time, so the enemy at Raptor Colony was getting huge food drops. Thousands per minute, I'd say. Very quickly, they had gained back an insane amount of food, and I was nowhere near a good spot. With a huge amount of frustration, I tried a last-ditch assassination attempt before rage quitting for the night. I baited out their army with one group, and then dashed into the nest with the rest of my workers the moment I saw the guards leave. With some quick movement, I can kill the queen just before the Eruptor forces come to save her. Wow, that was close. Next is Excavators, one of the levels I had not only not beaten, but never even opened. This level was so foreign to me, I didn't even know how it worked. After losing to some whip spiderlings, I recall a deep memory from inside of my mind. Due to this, I turned the difficulty down to easy and try again. More on that later. This difficulty being set to easy allows me to bulldoze the entire map. It's through this that I learned that Excavators has more food available than just about any other level in the entire game. I end up with an astonishingly huge force of 500 workers, almost all of which were level 3. 300 of them for, were for combat and 200 were for replacing eggs. My army was so large that I could click on one branch of the map, dig out the entire thing, and then go to the bathroom. By the time I came back, everything was dead. Now why exactly did I have to turn the difficulty to easy? I'll tell you after these damn crickets finally spawn. Anyways, the final cricket is unlike any creature I've seen before. In all my videos, the hand of god, the bullfrog, the whip spider. This cricket is an uber. Sporting 15,000 health, increased size, movement speed, area attack, much faster attacks, a slam, a 50% reduction of physical damage, and a heal over time. This cricket is a menace. Excavators was previously impossible even on the easy difficulty due to this heal over time, but now we have access to Titan Climbing. Titan Climbing allows slightly more damage as well as a stacking buff to all of my ants attacking it while it has ants on its hide. Easy difficulty was necessary to half its health to 7,500, otherwise this would have been strictly impossible with the food I have available. With easy difficulty, a massive army of level 3 workers and Titan Climbing, I am able to barely out damages heal while it shreds my flimsy workers. It tears through thousands of food before getting to low health. I drop below 10,000, 5,000, 1,000, and I'm forced to refund tiles to get the food back, but eventually, the cricket does fall, and I am victorious over my first uber enemy. Next is Tug of War, and I'm skipping this level due to the inability to create workers and the overall weird playstyle. After that is Occupation, a level very similar to New Home. We are given a wooden colony and must clear the map of strangely strong creatures. These creatures are my first introduction to the star level mechanic. Star creatures are larger, stronger, and tankier. The star level they have will exponentially scale all these stats, making the higher star creature insane. Regardless, we're playing on the medium difficulty. It doesn't take me too long to clear the nearby creatures before I set up my annoying nest layout. I was ready to fight these level 3 slave makers, but unknowingly let out a dozen more. These slave makers are insanely strong and bulldoze through my workers, ending the run. On my attempt, on my next attempt, I decided to clear way more food before challenging the slave makers. In this process, we run into the first one star Devil's Coach Horse Beat Larvae. They are noticeably bigger, but due to only having one star, they aren't too bad. The slave makers are at my door pretty soon, but I had more than enough to handle it at this point. A bit after that, I find myself fighting this two-star Devil's Coach Horse. This time, though, it's an adult. The thing was so tanky and did insane damage to my ants, but without its larvae escort, it was no match. I clear out some of the stragglers on the map and then open the final chamber. Multiple large tiger beetles, one of them being three stars. This is going to be a rough fight. I pull back closer to my nest, surround the beetles, and hope for the best. My workers climb onto their backs and quickly take down one of the zero star beetles, but the other two advance onto my brute chambers. The last zero star falls and it's a race against my food to kill the three star. However, like I always say, nothing beats a wall of workers. And I am victorious.
Next, we have the Leafcutter level, Cramped, on the medium difficulty. As the name suggests, we are cramped in a tight underground and tight surface. Unfortunately so, as workers take quite a bit of space. After scrambling together at basic nest, I get to clearing the surface and some of the easier bits in my nest. In short, any time I had to fight bush crickets or green rope beetles, it wasn't fun. And in fashion of this level, I had to spend an annoying amount of time AFK gathering resources. I've never really liked cramps, but this just made me develop an even greater distaste for the level. Here's some clips of me killing some of the larger enemies on the surface. Stuff like bush crickets, whip spiders, or mantis. In the underground, it was just an endurance test of how much food I stockpiled. In the end, it was enough to kill the green roof beetles and bush crickets to secure the win. Like Tug of War, I'll be skipping enemy of my enemy. We don't control anything here except how enemies are dug out. There's no building or nest system at all. After that skip, however, is the level infamous for its difficulty, the culling. Years ago, before I changed how difficulty was looked at in Empires of the Undergrowth, the culling on Insane was considered the most difficult achievement you could strive for. Only a handful of legends had ever completed it. Now, I'm not so sure how that would hold up, but I'm only trying this level on medium anyways. Our objective is to survive six nights. Enemies will slowly spawn as the day progresses and then invade my nest all at once when the sun sets. There are also two aphid farms that provide large amount of food if protected. There's some wood lice nearby that take quite some time to clear. The very first thing I notice is the burrow tiger beetle larvae on the eastern aphid plant. Due to this, I can't really contest the ladybirds there yet. Luckily for me, the ladybirds come in very small numbers in these early days. Before long, I have to defend the first attack already. The second day is more laid back though. I already feel comfortable enough defending both aphid plants as I nearly have a hundred workers already. The enemies simply consist of spiderlings and devil's coachers larvae, easily taken apart by the massive workers. Day 3 and I felt confident enough to full time defend both aphid plants. Around this time however, I was struggling to clear out the gathering creatures. Not like it would have mattered, I was already stomping anything that came into my path. However, I worked on the construction of a separate worker group that could go about clearing the map. While multiple groups were stationed on each aphid farm for constant food income, this worked amazingly, and soon I had three groups split up on the map, all performing different tasks and bringing in tons of food. By days 4 and 5, I was struggling to find space to make workers, and by day 6, I was basically in no threat at all. The only annoying thing was these mother spiders that kept spawning on the eastern patch, forcing me to pull my workers back and wait for the third group to come assist. But when the third group rolled around, I bulldozed over the spider. Come the evening of day 6, and there aren't even any enemies to challenge my mighty worker empire. My food stores were filled to the brim with insect bits and honeydew, and my empire was 250 workers strong. I thought this level was supposed to be difficult. What a joke. Maybe I will try workers only hard for extra levels after all. Or maybe not. Extremis is an odd level that I was debating skipping. Your goal is to survive 30 waves of attacks. Each wave survived will grant points upon losing that you can use to purchase upgrades for your next attempt. Unfortunately, workers don't get any upgrades. So with a heavy heart, I set the difficulty to easy and gave it a try anyways. I was shocked just how easy this was. I had the entire map cleared by wave 17 and nothing was even remotely threatening up to this point. Even through wave 20, nothing was standing up to- Oh lord, that's a lot of rove beetles. Like I mentioned before, green rove beetles have 2 armor which means all my workers are doing a measly 0.5 damage per hit. If my workers were blades of grass, these rove beetles burst into my nest like grandpa riding one of those lawn mowers that, like you can drive like a car. In short, they mowed through my workers. After a bloody fight with about a thousand food of losses, the beetles are fell. Well, that wasn't too bad. I still think this level will be a bre- It is. Damn. That's a lot of army ants. If my workers are butter, then these army ants are a red hot butter knife. Except they're actually red hot. After the army ants fall, however, things are pretty tame. Already in wave 27 and- Oh. 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 Wave 27? is level 3 leafcutter majors and level 3 ranged wood ants. And the worst thing is, it's taunt majors and rapid fire wood ants. Taunt majors paired with rapid fire wood ants are by far the most menacing composition of ants in the entire game. Separately I might have had a chance, but combined there is absolutely no way I could even stand up to this monster of an army. The reason this army is so menacing is the fact that not only are the Taunt and Rapid Fire some of the most efficient ants in the game at level 3, but that they synergize so well. The Rapid Fire will slow the movement and attack speed of anything they hit, but also have a lower range than Mortar. Taunt Majors will taunt enemies between them constantly. Rapid Fire will slow the rate at which my ants can move when they are taunted and the damage they deal when chipping away at the Leafcutter's huge HP pool. 
Thief Cutter Majors also heal by a considerable amount when they taunt. Level 3 Taunt Majors also have a large enough taunt radius that they keep the Rapid Fire relatively safe, and the Rapid Fire keep themselves insanely safe as well. Just watch how ineffective my workers are against this monster of a force. I don't even kill a single major, and I can't kill all the rapid fire even with multiple surrounds. The next monster wave of mantis arrives early and swiftly executes my run. Remember when I said nothing beats a wall of workers? Well, I think we found what beats a wall of workers. And yeah, there's no way this is possible. As a test, I sent the same 20 majors and 20 rapid fire into battle arena against 600 workers all at once. And can you guess what happened? The workers lost! It wasn't even close! There were 26 survivors out of the 40! I think I learned a very important lesson today, that being the godlike power of level 3 taunt rapid fire. Oh, after that clown fest, we have hibernation. Now, this level isn't any extra challenge for workers only, but it's a challenge in itself, just with its pure difficulty. I think this is one of the hardest levels, period. On Impossible, you need a whopping 1600 vegetation by the end of the level to win. And yeah, we're playing on Impossible. The standard strategy for this level is to ignore enemies and just mass workers anyways. So that's what I did. My vegetation collection was fairly good, and I thought I would win by a large margin by the end. Until I remember this is hibernation, and even with my good start, it was down to the wire at the end. But I did come out victorious. Next in the list is Adventure, a fairly new leafcutter level where my colony gains various buffs as I gain experience. I'll be playing on medium difficulty again. This is sort of the ultimate level. All the new features I've been discovering in extra levels have caught up to me and culminated in Adventure. I clear out some space in my nest and kill the row of beetles right on the surface for my first worker upgrade. Plus 50 speed, which is really good actually. Then after that I get increased harvesting rate and 20 more health. After that I get plus 1 base damage, which is insane. My workers are about twice as strong now, improvements that would be key to completing this level. From here on out, all the upgrades are either for units I can't use, queen upgrades, or pointless upgrades to the workers like Efficient Brood. I finish getting food near my nest, and then I launch an assault on the Eastern Leafcutter Colony. They are invading my space already, and the sooner I eliminate them, the better. But, like I always say, nothing, uh, almost nothing beats a wall of workers. I gut the Leafcutter Colony and take all their spoils for myself. Then, another colony makes itself known to me, the Trapjaw Colony. Just like the leaf cutters, I show them the might of the swarm. I then take the time to collect all the available food to me, and with it, a huge spike in army power. I also take some cinematic shots and clear my underground. Next, I fight these star enemies, including a cricket. Some rove beetles and velvet worms reside in the west. I also m make quick work of them. Something I should note, these damn rove beetles are still taking minimum damage, despite my increase in damage and workers. Insane! I thought the army ants would be an issue, but they fell rather easily, as does everything else. The uber jumping spider and its goons are a little bit to the south. Unlike the uber mole cricket, this thing does not do a lot of damage, but it does have a lot of health, so I click on it and go AFK for a while. I come back to find it almost dead, but it had made its way almost halfway up my trail, with most of my ants lost at the end. I swiftly kill it, and then I get another choice that doesn't affect me at level 25. I don't bother to read it, and it was a queen ability! Oh, yeah, I should have read that. Now I don't know if I have Royal Guard or Royal Decree. Great. Despite that blunder, I was almost finished. A 5-star Whip Spider and a 6-star Velvet Worm reside to the north. I clear them and take all the food. A 2-star Titan Whip Spider resides to the east. I devour it with ease. I would take the food, but I'm actually completely full. Now I have to clear the Southern Rise, by far the most difficult segment of this level before the final object plan has large groups of high-star roof Beetles, Crickets, and Praying Mantis. I opt to bait these groups down one at a time and fight them separately. Although I take significant losses in fighting them, things go alright until the Praying Mantis. Is that a 6 star Mantis? Oh boy. I invade the top of the mound and get torn apart, so... So, I wait inside my nest for the Mantis to come to me. With their rapid heal, it's a struggle to kill them, but surely they fall one by one until only the 6 star remains. I have to constantly attack switch and surround it to add damage its heal. In the end, however, it could not withstand my assaults. With this, the infested nest has opened. Within this cursed place lie many enemies of very high star magnitude. Even right at the entrance is a 9 star jumping spider. Right above it are these 5 star crickets. Some whip spiders, velvet worms, rove beetles, and young mantis. But by far the star of the show is the ubers. Four of them. A 2 star uber cricket is my first opponent. This cricket does a number on my forces, but due to my AoE resistance from level 26, my ants take surprisingly little damage from its bleed, and I'm able to click on the cricket and then go AFK while my ants tear it apart. One down. 
Next is these whip spiders. I, I can kill these massive spiderlings just fine, and then I opt to lure this massive harvest man outside. Its large AoE stun attack that normally does 1 damage does about 20, so it can actually really interfere with it and kill my ants. After taking care of it, I give the rogue beetles the same treatment, and shortly after the velvet worms. Then I go ahead and fight the uber mantis, something that I wasn't sure if I could defeat. Luckily, we outdamaged its heal, and it only did a single target. Luckily, we outdamaged its heal, and it only did single target attacks, so it didn't stand a chance. Two down. Next was the 3 star uber whip spider. Unlike the mantis, it does have AoE, but weirdly enough, most of my ants seemed immune to the bleed and the whip spider attacks. This was odd, but I should expect nothing less from my mighty workers. 3 down, and now I just had the uber velvet worm. This was a menacing beast. Its goo cannons dealing insane damage and its slithery tentacles providing insane protection. However, due to the same oversight that caused my workers to be immune against the whip spider, the goo often did no damage to my workers. To top it off, my workers were unaffected by the velvet worm's splash damage. Slowly, however, the velvet worm would kill off the workers one by one. The new workers to take their place did seem vulnerable to these attacks, but by now it was too late. I had conquered some of the most powerful critters the game could possibly throw at me, and I did it with workers only. Next up is Occupation 2, a very similar level to Occupation 1. Unfortunately, I have to play this level in easy. Just like Occupation, there are many start enemies. This time, however, they will dig their way out to me. I slowly clear the map and be careful not to challenge anything that might be too menacing. Eventually, I was able to clear these checkered beetle larvae, and I didn't really fight anything even close to menacing, until the very reason I set this difficulty the easy, the 5 star toad. Toads have a constant heal, and without the 2 times damage on easy, I would not have been able to kill this behemoth of a toad. I'm barely able to out damage it before its buddies dig in. I am able to kill one of the backup toads before pulling back. Once the toads waddle their way over to me, I am able to swiftly execute them. Next we have Tug of War 2 and Enemy of My Enemy 2. Just like the prequels, they are not traditional levels and can't be completed workers only, because you can't build or even control workers. The last level of this challenge brings us to the culling 2. This time we are set in a swamp scene with the big headed ants. I also choose hard difficulty, and there's a very good reason for that. Big headed ants understand what my vision is for workers only, and for that reason, their workers do about quadruple the damage for the same cost. This is nothing short of ridiculous. Day 1 I spent establishing my nest gathering food. Day 2 is more of that, but I have some aphids now. By the end of the day 2 attack, I've already started my bulldozing phase, where nothing really stands a chance against my army anymore. Threats like checkered beetle, bombardier beetles, large tiger beetles, toads, and lynx spiders get absolutely torn to shreds. Meanwhile, I keep collecting aphids and massing army size. This immense power with big headed ant workers brings me to the final day without any sort of problem. And even on the last day, I bulldoze through everything just as fast as I can walk from place to place. These pine frogs, no chance. These red velvet ants, destroyed. These newts, devoured. Big headed ants are the culmination of everything I've ever wanted in a workers only run. And it is pure bliss. With the end of night 6, I proved that it is possible to complete all traditional extra levels using nothing but the might of workers. I'm gonna go ahead and ignore extremists due to its weird nature. Hey. Thanks for sticking to the end. If you think this is the end of the workers only series, don't worry, there's much more to come. If you're following the Slug Disco community, you might know that tier 5 and the full release of the game are on the horizon. With that, will come a brand new tier of workers only, deathless and no house connected. Oh, and speedruns. I'm ecstatic about where that will bring us, but that content will take me a tremendous amount of time to push out. And for that reason, there won't be much EOTU content from now until then, if any. The only video I can see coming out is workers only extra levels on increased difficulty. Until then, however, thanks for joining me on this journey. Please be sure to like and subscribe, these videos take me hours upon hours to record and edit. I'll see you later.